And we walk in there, and there's Sugar Ray Leonard. Mike Tyson, Michael Phelps, Drew Brees, Akeem, just everybody, man. <laughs> you guys can do charity without money. There's so many ways to make money now through a cell phone that's never happened in any other recession in history. People will pay for your skills, your passion, or your hobby. Get an extra 20 bucks a day, 50 bucks a day, 100 bucks a day, 200 bucks a day. That's actually double most people's salary in America. Why do you need to make more money and why do you need to save money? Let's have a really blunt discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Money Mondays. Today's edition is hurricanes, earthquakes, and humanitarian awards. I am co-hosted with the real Tarzan. Rawr. Tarzan gets over 200 million views a month on social media. I might have to change that number because yesterday, I don't know how many views he got yesterday, <laughs> but he's got over a million likes on his post yesterday. What's the number you're in? What do you got? It's like 15 million views for one. 15 million views yesterday. So we might have to change the number of this whole 200 million views a month. It's 215 million views this month. <laughs> All right, guys. So the Money Mondays works like this. We talk about three core topics, how to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity. But we do that when we have a podcast guest because we're literally in a hurricane. We don't have a guest today. We wanted to make a special edition episode and talk about what happened this week with the humanitarian award that I received uh, for charity. And we're going to walk you through some of the things of how you can interact with charities, how to build up your own personal brand, how to invest in things, how to deal with charity efforts, how to network, build relationships with athletes, celebrities, entertainers, and everything in between. So, Tarzan, tell us, how did you feel being in that room where at the Beverly Hilton, it's Dana Pump and David Pump, it's their charity event, the 23rd year of their charity, and we walk in there, and there's Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, Michael Phelps, Drew Akeem, Brees, it's just everybody, man. Everywhere you turn, it's like a legend, 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 young, old, and everything between Jerry West, the NBA logo. Bro, Jerry West is there. Bill Walton's giving speeches. <laughs> like Nuts. Okay, so let me walk you guys through what happened. There's Dana and David Pump. They are sports agents, and they help with ticket brokering, and they deal with charities, and they have this one core charity that their parents started many years ago, and for 23 years in a row, they have this athlete-filled event for cancer research. They've raised $11 million and growing for cancer. So when they asked me if I would be part of it, I was like, of course I'd be part of it. I've been going for the last few years. And this year, they were like, we have awards for Michael Phelps, Drew Brees, John McEnroe, et cetera. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And they were like, we want to present you with the humanitarian award for charity. And I was like, well, I don't have any uh, you know, Olympic gold records or medals. Like Michael Phelps has 23 or 28 or something. Like, I don't have that. Drew Brees has like a Super Bowl champion. I don't have that. The concept of why they picked me was we broke the Guinness Book World Records for the world's largest toy drive last year. And this year, we're going to do 10 cities in a 15-day period somehow. And we're going to just demolish our own toy drive record and just go absolutely crazy. And we're doing it in Los Angeles starting December 2nd. And then I don't know the exact nine cities, like the dates, but we are doing Atlanta, Tampa, Jacksonville, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Dallas, help Utah. me out, Salt Lake City. We need, only need two more. Oh. Did we say Jacksonville? We said Jacksonville, Miami, Jacksonville, Tampa. Yeah. Those are all the Florida ones. Dallas, Atlanta, or somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else, right? We're somewhere else. We've got yeah, somewhere else. else. <laughs> all right. There's 10 cities during that time. And the point of it is, we want people to replicate the charity. That was actually part of my speech. So during these 10 cities, we're going to be collecting toys for about three to four weeks prior in that local town, either at one main hub or in a bunch of different smaller hubs, bringing it to the one main hub. So what that means is, and I'm going to walk you through it so you guys can do your own type of charities or do your own toy drive or other charities like it, is you don't need a bunch of money to do charity. You can do charity with what I call Power, energy, and effort. Power is the inertia, the energy of like, hey, I text Tarzan, Tarzan texts Trevor, Trevor texts this person. We all post on Facebook and Instagram. And hey, guys, we're going to take over this warehouse on this date, December 2nd, and bring as many toys as you can. That didn't cost anything, right? You're text messaging. You already have a phone. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, threads, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok. Free, 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 and free. So you have all the social media platforms. You don't have to have a big following. What happens is if I invite Tarzan, Tarzan invites Trevor, Trevor invites Roger, Roger invites boom, 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 boom. 
all of a sudden, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 people start to show up to your toy drive just from you texting, posting on social media. Cost you zero. The warehouse that you're gonna do this at, this is gonna do your toy drive at, you're gonna get for free. You know why? That business owner or the person that owns that warehouse or person that owns that like clothing brand or whatever's in that warehouse, they want you to be there. It looks good for them to be involved with a charity. Last year, we did our huge one in Los Angeles. And then two days later, we took over the Lions Not Sheep warehouse. We filled it up with a ton of toys. And the same day, all the toys went out. Sean Whalen didn't charge us a dollar for that. Obviously, he wanted us to have the toy drive at his warehouse. It's great for his brand. He's very efficient. He has a warehouse full of staff that can help us with all the processes. Bada bing, bada boom. We threw a toy drive. You guys can do the same thing in your local town for toy drives, back to school drives, uh, Thanksgiving food drives, grabbing supplies for the homeless, etc. just by what I call rallying the troops, right? If you use the power, energy, and inertia of like getting people together, rally the troops like, hello, hello, just posting on social media, text everyone. You'll be surprised how many people want to help you volunteer. We all want to do charity, but your job, if you're listening, is to make charity easy. And that's what my whole speech was about that night at the Beverly Hilton was, I didn't talk about myself. I don't think I said the word I once. I talked about what everyone there could be doing. There's 1,200 people in that room. Athletes, legends, sports agents, business executives. And so my entire speech was about them, not about me, because I want the chair to be much bigger than me. The people in that room and the people that are listening here on the Money Mondays, if you go out there and you pick a location and you tell your friends and you post on social media and you ask for favors and you tell people, hey, bring toys over to this warehouse, people are going to show up. And they're going to show up big. They're going to call the local news stations, the local radio stations, podcasters, the friend that owns the car dealership, the lady that owns apartment buildings, the guy that owns the big office building. Boom. It just all happens and it costs you nothing. Nothing. Now, if you want to donate money, you want to go buy toys, you can. But I want the 15-year-old listening, you can do a toy drive. The 82-year-old listening, you can do a toy drive. You do not need money to do a toy drive. Let me really be really blunt about it. It sounds overwhelming. Oh, planning a toy drive with 200 people? It's not. You pick a location, you pick a date, you pick a time, you invite a bunch of people, you post on social media, you make one main flyer, you make yourself a video like, hey guys, come December 2nd, Los Angeles, we're going to be at Hubble Studio, bada bing, bada boom, bring all the toys you can. That's that's it. All of a sudden, you're going to have hundreds of toys or thousands of toys or God willing, a whole bunch more just from you going out there and inviting people to a warehouse to do a toy drive. Okay, so Beverly Hilton, Dana Pump, David Pump for their charity event, 23rd year, I'm the very first speaker. I'm sitting next to Drew Brees, Mike Tyson, and all these people. My best friend, the founder of Marvel Studios, is sitting right next to me. Our C- my CEO of Elevator, his name is Joey Carson, is right there. So, like, it's showtime. My friends are there. Travis is there. Everyone's there. And it's showtime. And I have a decision to make. I can do, like, the, I just, you know, I want to thank God and everybody here for giving them. I didn't want to do that. This is my opportunity to get 1,200 people in the industry to go do something. And luckily, it worked out. I had like 60 people that pulled me aside like, man, that was the best speech we've heard. You never said the word I. The whole thing was about us. Uh, the people were telling me how they were already texting their staff, their executives, their agents about what they could be doing for charity. Because I just broke down this exact basic thing. You guys can do charity without money. Again, money can help. Money can be the gasoline on the fire. It's unnecessary to do charity. That is not the point. And we've made this like stigma about charity like, Oh, it's rude to talk about charity or it's, if you post about it, then it's not really charity. That's a complete lie. Let me just be really clear with you guys. It's nonsense. I post about charity because I want you to replicate my charity. Let me give you another example. Back during the shutdown, us and a guy named Jimmy Rex created these the $100 tipping dinner. I mentioned it to you guys in an episode before. The $100 tipping dinner is where we went to get like 8, 9, 10, 11 friends together. We'd go to a restaurant and then we'd surprise the waiter or waitress with, 1100 bucks and they'd either split it with the staff or depending on the amount of money sometimes we do a thousand dollars each with like 29 people so all of a sudden there's twenty nine thousand dollars and we'd surprise like 50 percent goes to the waiter or waitress 50 percent goes to the staff holy smokes right they could buy a car that's crazy we never talked about it being us and by doing it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times i've seen people post about their own tipping dinners copying us most of them don't even know who I am. That's fantastic. I can never make a big charity if it's based on me. And I don't think people realize that. Most people have the stigma about charity because it's they do it for their own egos. 
I don't need your pat on the back. I don't need you to donate to my charity. I need you to do charity. I need you and your friends and followers and staff to do charity. And so during that speech that night, I walked them through how these people in the room, they could do charity. They could take action. They could get their staff together. They could get their friends and family together and they could do charity. When you were there and you were interacting, obviously that so many people were excited to see you also. How did it feel to be in that room and what did you think about the experience in general? First of all, man, congratulations. It was cool to see my boy up there go first. And bro, you had zero, like you weren't nervous at all. I didn't see it. I didn't see a ounce of sweat on your forehead. You went up there nice and smooth, ran through your, but I mean, you're in front of crowds every single week, you know, so um, congratulations again, man. Thank you. I love you, dude. It's, uh, it's, it's cool to see you do real ph philanthropic work. Is that how you say it, right? Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> I always struggle with that word. But um, yeah, man, it was cool to see all the real legends in there. You know, Ric Flair was there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike Tyson, Michael Phelps, everybody, Drew Brees, all these, uh, all these champions, all these, all these Olympians. You know, all these um, Jerry West. Yeah, Paul Frick Pierce is over there. Paul Pierce. Yep. You know, just it was nuts, man. You know, and uh, it was cool to look in the. And the and the and the and the waves of all the legends. I see my boy sitting front and center. You know, it makes me feel like I'm in the right place at the right time with the right people. Yep. And um, it inspires me to go harder. You know. And uh, I'm glad and, you said that because we got to do ten cities this year. It's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> well, yeah, man. And, and and do more charity work too. Yeah. You know. And um, like you said, I, I was always indoctrinated in our brains to not talk about charity because if you post about it. I, I like the way you, you've rewired our brains to think like the opposite, yes. you know, and uh, it's cool, man. We have to make it easy for people to do charity. We have to make it okay to talk about charity. We have to make people want to do charity and take away the stigma like, oh, if I donate money, only this percentage is going to get to the people. Okay, don't, don't, don't donate money. Go there in person. Donate your time. Go volunteer. Go spend time there. Post about it on social media. Get everyone together to go help a charity that you believe in. The money part is only for the ones that are like cancer research, AIDS research, leukemia, things that aren't like a physical thing that you can go do. Those need a ton of capital because it does take huge staff, huge overhead, huge offices, et cetera. The charities that we do, this is a back to school drive. You bring supplies. Thanksgiving food drive. You bring turkeys and cranberry sauce. Like we're not asking for money. I want people to be able to replicate the charities that we do because it's very physical. Like when we make the backpacks for the homeless, which is called Model Citizen Fund, it's been 11 years now. It's half food and drinks. The other half is supplies, cleaning supplies, duct tape, socks, a watch, a poncho, a sleeping bag, etc. in a backpack. You can buy backpacks from Model Citizen Fund and we'll donate to the homeless or to women abuse shelters or teen abuse shelters or orphanages. Or you can make backpacks filled with supplies. You don't have to donate to Model Citizen Fund. You can do it. You can just go get Ziploc bags and do a smaller version. You can have your kids do it, your friends do it, your staff do it, your school do it. Anybody can do it. My goal to post about charity is so that you can see how actually easy it is, even though it looks overwhelming on social media. It sounds overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, they raised this much money for charity or they did this many f meals or they, did, they built all these schools or they built all these water pumps in Africa. These are very functional, executable things by anyone. I'm not saying it like, oh, anybody can do it. No, literally anybody can do it. It just takes power, energy, and effort. And that comes from your cell phone. I'm not talking about power in the gym. I'm not talking about you need millions of followers like Tarzan. You just need to have 500 followers and go text people and post on social media and word will spread. Because then when your 12 friends post it and they all have a couple thousand followers, 12 times a couple thousand, bam, 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 starts to add up quick. Okay. Hurricane Hillary. Ah! <laughs> I want to apologize for bringing the hurricanes from Florida. <laughs> this is the first time there's ever been a freaking hurricane warning in California. We are in Temecula, California. We're at the Wild Jungle. That's W-Y-L-D. There's 26 acres. But what's on these 26 acres? There's 180 animals. And they're like, hey, dad, they're talking to Tarzan. What is going on here? There's freaking rain everywhere. We're hoping... It doesn't hit us too hard tonight. Right now, we're literally looking outside. You might see my eyes keep looking outside. We are in a rainstorm, but hopefully we're not in an actual like thunderstorm or hurricane. We don't know what's going to happen yet until tonight. But for safety reasons, we just spent the last, I don't know, 17 hours moving a big portion of these 188 animals into indoor barns. But you can imagine because it's 26 acres, that's like a half a mile to walk from that <laughs> side to that side. 
And so we went through that process. Tarzan, walk us through why should we do it? How should you be prepared in case of situations if they have animals at home? Well, this this whole facility, man, is actually perfect for exactly what we're doing. You know, to have 188 animals dispersed on 26 acres, but we have a space dedicated solely for if it's too hot, yep. if it's too cold, if it rains too much, we can just walk everybody down there or trailer them down there, and they're safe. You know, they got no flies. There's light. There's fans. There's just you know, constant staff, always taking care of them. Me and you live 30 feet away from the other barn, so we yeah. can just walk down there. There's cameras in there, so we can hit a button on our phone and check on them. Uh, we have babies being born left and right. Yes, we do. You know, we're shifting goats from, like, everybody has their own section to one section now. So we have, like, what, 25 goats in one area, and all just jumping around, playing on each other. They're probably thinking it's, like, recess or something <laughs> over <party> there. time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, safety is a... Uh, is, is, is a real thing when it comes to animals and um usually stuff like this doesn't happen in california so you know it's like abnormal we're always thinking about like forest fires or bushfires stuff like that on the west coast but um to have a hurricane is something that i'm actually really used to because i've been preparing for hurricanes for the past like 12 13 years living in florida so we always do it around the same time like right before to see how much a hurricane disperses out in the ocean or if it breaks down before it hits land but man you never know living in cali we just had an earthquake like what 30 minutes ago yeah 5.5 earthquake which is pretty big especially for california just happened which obviously makes the stress level go up for people of california because they don't know what's gonna happen we don't know if the tornadoes and hurricanes are going to kind of fade away as they get over over the land or if it's really going to come in here and do 60 to 80 miles an hour winds which is what the media keeps saying so crossing our fingers that it just kind of rainstorm and fades away but the flights have been canceled throughout vegas san diego I mean, the Link Hotel was flooded as of last night. All the all the flights were already shut down. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. We're going to know tonight. And luckily, it passes by within 24 hours. So hopefully, uh, we do not get hurt too bad throughout California and Nevada. Okay. Why do you need to make more money? And why do you need to save money? Let's have a really blunt discussion. Situation like this. Yes. We're in a moment in time that what would happen if you couldn't go to work for a week? What would happen... If your house got damaged, what would happen if your car gets damaged? What would happen if something goes on with your accessories, your f personal stuff, your life, the windows, just those little things? There's all these scary stats about how much people have saved up in America. The numbers are staggering about how few people have even $1,200 in savings. What if the windows break in your car and you don't have insurance? Well, there's a couple things to that. One making sure you have insurance for the different aspects of your life. Two, how do you afford to have extra insurance and to cover different topics? Because there is earthquake insurance and fire insurance and house insurance and health insurance and car insurance. And boy, it feels like they get you from every angle and they have pet insurance and everything between. All those like $30, $100, $200, $80 adds up. You have to decide for yourself about your preparedness, how much of these things you want to be prepared for. And Based on your age, especially, you have to think about levels of health insurance, the children in your life, significant others, parents, etc. Life insurance, because God forbid something happens, what would happen to your family? Are you the main supporter of your family? And people often don't have these discussions because it's rude to talk about this. You need to have a financial plan. You need to have insurance. You need to have these discussions with your family about what would happen if this happened. What would happen if we lost power. They're expecting to lose power through a lot a lot of parts of California. There's six counties right next to us that were already evacuated. What would happen if those people are evacuated and they can't afford to go stay in hotels? Because if they theoretically only have 1200 bucks saved up and they got to go get two hotel rooms for them and their kids, that's 200 bucks a night times two. What if they have to stay there for a week? Well, 400 bucks a night times seven is $2,800. They only have 1200 bucks. See the problem? And so we have to have these discussions. Because otherwise, people are going to be left on an island by themselves. They're going to feel confused and scared and not knowing what to do. So it's parts of why I say you have to make more money. It's not that I'm financially shaming you. It's that you physically need to make more money because our life is getting more expensive. 9% a year inflation is hard to deal with. And next year is an election year. It's going to be a very similar 9% a year. And the year after that, depending on who's president, it's probably going to be 9% again. So we're somewhere between 7 and 10%. And just think about the math on that. If you've got 10 grand saved up and now it's worth 9100 then it spends like 8200 
and it spends like 7300 that 10 grand that you saved up is just kind of fading away of the value and people might be thinking it's like a conspiracy theory or like a what do you call it like a tin hat stuff that's just math i'm not making anything up look at how much gas prices were three years ago look how much gas prices are now how much was it for bread three years ago how much is bread now go try to buy a gallon of milk right now blueberry muffins a dollar fifty a pop a dollar fifty. We saw a four pack of blueberry muffins yesterday. There were six dollars for a four pack. I walked away. <laughs> I was like, I thought I had some money. I don't have money. I don't have six dollars for muffins money. I don't. Like <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> you saw me walk away. <laughs> like I had a f- full grocery cart. I'm like, no, I'm not. I can't do it. Six. I was v- physically upset. I had a visceral reaction. <laughs> six dollars for a four pack of basic muffins, like grocery store muffins, not fancy muffins, not a brand, just the Ralph's grocery muffins. For six dollars, why does that matter? A couple years ago, those were two or three bucks. So you can do the math. That's more than nine percent inflation there. You know why? A lot of companies take advantage of it. When we had the shutdown, remember how much gas prices went up? Exxon Mobil went from like two, three dollars a gallon to four, five, six dollars a gallon. And then they started blaming the Ukraine war. What the heck does Ukraine have to do with their gas prices? Guess how much gas and fuel we get from Ukraine? It rhymes with zero. Like actually zero. What are we talking about? And our gas went to five, six dollars. And if you live in California, good luck. It was even more than that. Think about this. Exxon Mobil had the highest record breaking quarter in corporate history in its whole eight, six, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty year, whatever it is, history. So did they have to raise the prices because of the war? Or did they just pillage everyone and make the highest net profit margin they've ever made in their entire corporate history of a multi-bazillion dollar company. These aren't tin hat things. This is not tin foil, whatever you call it. This is just basic math stuff. And once a company realizes they can charge this much for bread or this much for blueberry muffins or this much for milk or whatever, they don't want to go backwards. They like those big profit margins. They like it because they're also impacted too, by the way. They're paying more for other stuff. They're paying more for gas, more for trucking, more for employees, more for shipping, more for everything because they're dealing with inflation also. All of us are dealing with inflation. And that's why I'm so blunt about why you need to make more money and save more money. Life is expensive. Just the little things of like trying to take a family of four to Disneyland or Universal Studios or on a trip or to a hotel or to a restaurant or to the movies. Remember when tickets to the movies were three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks? Now it's eight bucks, then 10 bucks, then 12 bucks, then 15. Like who can afford $15 a ticket for a family of four? And then good luck buying a popcorn. You got to sell a kidney to buy a popcorn. Like we're getting into a time where the lower income is physically not able to afford the most basic things in their life, which is food, water, shelter. And then that's going to the middle class now where if they can't buy a car or gas or these things because it becomes too unaffordable, we're going to be in a weird spot financially. Now, I don't want to say gloom, you know, the gloom and doom concept because I don't believe we're in a recession. We are in a financial turn and there's some reality checks happening, but a recession would be I go to the airport and it's empty. I go to a casino in Las Vegas and it's empty. I go to a high-end restaurant or retail stores and it's empty. I've never seen a busier in my life. Like you can't even, I went to LAX two days ago and I had to park three terminals away because every terminal was full. On a Wednesday. That's not a recession. I go inside and every single first class seat is gone on a Wednesday. When I land in Las Vegas, boom, every single casino is packed, packed. And the casino host is talking about, oh man, the restaurant is completely sold out tonight. It's a Wednesday and they're completely booked out. That's not a recession. When you look at it from the had a nightclub going on with the chain smokers and they were like, oh yeah, it's $10,000 a table. Every table sold out. I wasn't going there. I just mean like every part of the world when I went to Vegas, when I went to New York, when I went to everywhere this last week, everything was packed. Everything was sold out. And so are we going through a financial turn and financial situations happening, especially for lower income and middle class? Absolutely. Are we in an actual recession? Absolutely not. And it's not close. There's so many more ways to make money now than ever before that people are not taking into account. 2008 was our last real recession. If you notice, the smartphone it was just coming around that time. There wasn't fancy apps. There wasn't a way to like use Airbnb to rent out your extra bedrooms. There wasn't a way for you to become a tutor. There wasn't a way for you to be a dog walker through an app. 
There wasn't a way for you to be a babysitter or a dog sitter or teach guitar or teach Spanish. You didn't have all these ways to make money like you do now. So when people lose their jobs or situations happy, all of a sudden they have ways to make money where they can become an Instacart driver, a Postmates driver, an Uber driver. They can do extra side jobs like tutoring on their phone, etc. They can make extra money. They can sell their jeans, flip their shoes, buy baseball cards. Like there's so many ways to make money now through a cell phone that's never happened in any other recessions in history. So things are different. And there's been a lot of appreciation. People's houses went up, their stock portfolios went up. There's a lot of more money that was created, a lot more wealth that was created over the last 15 years since the last recession. So we are not in a recession. There's a lot of debates about it. And my debate is, if I can't go to a casino or I can't go to a restaurant or I can't go to the airport or I can't go to any basic thing, I'm not in recession. Because when we're in recession, like we're in 2008, I can tell you the, the baseball games, I was right there by Petco Park at a, a store there right next to the, the stadium. It was empty. Right now, Good luck getting a ticket. It's sold out because we're not in a recession. All right. I'm going to cover a couple more topics before we go because I want to keep this episode under 40 minutes. Remember, we always keep the Money Mondays under 40 minutes because the average workout is 45 minutes. The average commute is 45 minutes. And so we want to keep these very short and effective for you guys so you guys can share it. Keep in mind, we also do a coaching call every Monday at 4 p.m. PST on the themoneymondays.com. Themoneymondays.com is where we actually do live coaching. I'm there almost every single Monday. And if I'm not there on that Monday, there's someone every Monday, either my CEO or Tarzan or someone like Jeff Fenster from Everbowl, someone in our business world that's going to be doing teaching and coaching. And so it goes for about 40 minutes of teaching, whether it's myself or one of us that's teaching, and then 20 minutes of live Q&A. So if you guys ever want to do the actual coaching with us, it's themoneymondays.com. And then we take those profits and we put it in for the toy drive coming up because we got a very expensive toy drive in 10 cities coming up. But yeah, check out the moneymondays.com for yourself or for your friends. I think it's a great opportunity for you guys. And I enjoy hosting it because I get to do live Q&A sessions with a lot of our listeners and a lot of our friends. Okay, next topic. So we're not in a recession. Doesn't mean that you don't have to worry about finances. I just mean that we're not in a recession. So there's a lot of money to be made. Uh, making more money is done by you considering your core job as your main income stream and finding things that you like or that you're good at, or is your hobby to make money from. So if Tarzan's hobby or his passion is animals, what are the ways he can make money from that? If your passion is music, can you teach people how to play the flute or the guitar or sing? Can you give, co- you know, la 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 la. Can, can you teach me how to sing? I need it, right? Like, I know you're right. I'll, I'll pay for it. I'll let that sink in for a second. I know you guys heard my voice, right? Like people will pay for your skills, your passion, or your hobby. So if you can find something you like, whether it's making custom jewelry, you know how to paint really well, you know how to teach someone to do something like a, you know, a language, a skill, something to do with their schoolwork, etc. People will pay you and they will pay you virtually over the phone or in person. There are ways for you to make extra money. So it does not mean to quit your day job. It means that if you know how to buy and sell shoes and flip them or you know how to buy stuff at like Gary Vee always talks about going to garage sales, buying stuff and selling it. There are ways for you to make an extra 20 bucks a day, 50 bucks a day, 100 bucks a day, 200 bucks a day. Now you might be sitting there like, what do I care about making an extra 200 bucks a day for? That's actually double most people's salary in America. If you made an extra 200 bucks a day, that is $6,000 a month. Most people don't make more than three or four grand a month throughout our whole country. So if you can figure out a side hustle that makes you 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, you know, custom doing pillows or making some like sketches and art or selling, you know, making custom hats. There's just an endless amount of things that you might like to do or enjoy doing or just good at or your passion. I've seen people that are just like custom making flower bundles and making like 150 bucks a day, just custom making flower bundles. They don't even own the flower company. They're just doing it. People that are selling other people's products, they're just making money from commissions, right? They're going out there and being what's called an affiliate. They're an affiliate for a company, a product, a brand, or a service. They see someone that they like, like a Tony Robbins or Russell Brunson or us, and they'll go, it's like, hey, I'm going to offer the moneymondays.com and get a commission. Or I'm going to go sell a Tony Robbins thing and get a commission. Or I'm going to go sell tickets to the Limitless Arena event and I'll get a commission. Like you can go out there and sell other people's stuff if you don't have something you want to sell. Go to someone that you like or a product that you like and try to sell their stuff and get a commission or maybe get a base salary plus commission. Why? Life's not going to get any less expensive. It's just not. Once these companies, the government, 
people, society, know they can charge X, they're not going to go back down. They're not going to lower the price points. And so because of that, and people feel it and they see it, and that they are able to get away with charging this much money for things, you need to make more money. You need to be able to save more money. Let's go down the saving money th part. So making money is obvious because if you're making two grand, three grand, four grand, five grand a month, and you're not able to save up enough capital, you're not giving yourself a lot of outs to be able to either invest capital or just have room for situations or bad things that happen or just life or be able to travel or extra things. On the saving money side, here's what's important. One, you need to have a backup. Everything above six months saved of your overhead should be investably, investable capital. Getting to the six months saved up puts you in one of the top percentages of our country of people in a financially stable environment. Why do I say six months? The six month number, let's say your overhead is three grand a month and you're currently making five grand a month at your job and your, your husband or wife or significant other or roommate is making also three, four grand a month. By having money saved up of six months, in case something happens, the world shut down, you lose your job, there's a health scare, something happens, you've got enough time to be able to cover those situations as if you have no more income coming in. The ideal scenario is 12 months. If you can get to 12 months saved up, so let's say you've got three grand a month overhead, if you can get to $36,000 saved up, you are in a very safe spot compared to most of society. This is a big deal. Now, some of you listening might be like, oh, I make 200 grand a year and 100 grand a year. This is the money Mondays. Well, I talk about all this big money stuff. You're going to have children. You're going to have friends and employees that are making two, three, four grand a month. Talk to them about this. Everything I talk about is not just for you guys. It's for your friends, your family, your followers, your staff. We are here to have blunt discussions about money. This is important for you guys. Not everything will apply to you, obviously, because sometimes we talk about $72 million acquisition investments. And sometimes we're talking about how to make 400 bucks extra because it's important. And so that's what the whole concept of why Tarzan and I do this is we need to have these blunt discussions. But saving up money is a critical thing to give yourself financial safety. And from an emotional perspective, your household will feel safer and more protected if you have some money saved up. You don't have to be a millionaire. You don't have to go save up hundreds of thousands of dollars. But you do need to have money saved up to cover overhead in case of an emergency. Tarzan, when you grew up, was there people talking about money in your family, your friends, your social circles? Like, was it okay to do it? Was it rude? Like, how did it happen? How did it feel as you were growing up? Well, luckily, I come from a family of hustlers. Nice. So like we were it. always talking about, hey, you got to get out there and earn it and figure it out, you know? But uh, as far as my friends or people around me, nobody's talking about money. It was rude. It was not, not the right thing to talk about. You know, everybody was, like you said, hush, hush. You know, it was... Uh, People didn't want to talk about what they got paid or how they made money or what they made it for. And if they were, they were probably lying. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just given, you know, those extravagant numbers. And it's like your lifestyle is not matching up to what you're saying you're doing, you know. And uh, I see you all the time, so you're not working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm putting two and two together. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, but again, like my family, everybody's always trying to hustle, get it in, you know. And uh, luckily, a lot of my family members and close friends, they do what they're passionate about. And that's where I, you know, I kind of get my influence from as well to do exactly what I want to do because I saw them do what they want to do. And they, they may not have been super rich, but they were happy, you know, and they would go to work every day for, I mean, I still have uncles and aunts that do the same thing I saw them do when I was a baby, you know. And it's like, man, you're like 60 years old and you're like, you can retire, but like you're actually happy doing what you do, you know, so I love it. And people gonna, should do it more. We're going to go down one more rabbit hole before we wrap up. All right. I hope you guys are sitting down for this one. You are going to live longer than your parents. If you have children, they are going to definitely outlive you. Here's why. Our parents, and even when I was growing up, there was no gyms on every corner. There was no Whole Foods. Organic food didn't exist. Vegan wasn't even a word. None of this stuff was out there for health food, healthy diets, biohacking. That's in the sci-fi movie. Like, what is biohacking? didn't exist. None of these things existed when we grew up. So if you're listening and you're 35, 40, 45, 55 years old, when you grew up, you literally didn't have any gyms next to you and you didn't have any health food stores and you definitely didn't have any supplements, dietary products, biohacking, mental health. None of these things were a topic or even on the radar at all. 
So for our parents, it was much worse. They had even less than what we had growing up because that definitely wasn't an option. They had McDonald's and grocery stores. That was about it. Nowadays, for people that are 20, 30, 40 years old, you've got gyms everywhere. You have supplement products. you got First Form. You can go get healthy products today. You can get healthy versions of water like BLK water. and all. Like You can get great brands and products and services. You can get Everbowl, Acai Bowls. That didn't exist back in the days. You can, what's an acai bowl 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Didn't exist. So nowadays, people have access to information, social media, awareness, websites, mobile apps that can teach you about health and fitness, gyms everywhere, etc. We just didn't have that before. Why does any of that matter? Especially for your children. Because we used to think that you'd retire at 65 to 75 years old. But most people would pass away at 77 to 83 years old. So you really only needed money for like seven to 14 years, which is a long time, but it wasn't like that much time. What if you're listening right now and I told you you're going to live to 102 and your kids might live to 110 to 120 and you want to retire at 65 to 75 years old. You don't want to work when you're 92 years old. Like you're not going to want to work at 92, right? Wait a minute. If you're going to retire at 65 to 75 and you're going to live to 102, you need to have 27 to 37 years of money saved up. Let that sink in for a second. You're going to need 27 to 37 years of money saved up. So let's just use a round number like 30 years. If you need 30 years of money saved up so that you don't work after the age of 65 to 75, what is your lifestyle? Let's pick a number. Let's say for you, your husband or wife and your two kids, the kids are only going to be till 18 and they're off on their own. Let's say you want to have a nice lifestyle of eight grand a month. That's a, you're balling, right? You can have a nice house. You can have a good lifestyle. You guys can be a part of a country club, whatever. Like you can live a good life, eight grand a month. You're the senior citizen community at 82 years old. You're happy. Things are good. Eight grand a month is a lot of money. It's a hundred grand a year. Not counting inflation, not counting things special. Let's just keep it at 30 years, a hundred grand a year. That's three million dollars you need saved up on the side you see where i'm about to go with this what if you live to 105 108 every year is another hundred thousand dollars not counting inflation what about your wife or husband that you're hopefully is going to be with right next to you what about all the other situations that could arise along the way what if you need some extra money for medical something happens things happen when you're 91 years old right even even in our society where we're going to have like robotic limbs and all the other crazy stuff which we'll save for another episode like get you new organs and whatever transplant your head like all those things that costs money so you need as a baseline three million dollars just to live a normal life because you wanted to have this fancy lifestyle eight grand a month okay let's say you can survive on four or five grand a month you still need 1.5 still not some small number and so why am I so blunt? And you can hear it in my voice, like why I'm so passionate. You have to make more money and save more money for your family, for yourself, significant other, et cetera. Not even counting you supporting your children or paying for their college. I'm just talking about the basics. If you want to live a four or five grand a month forever from 65 to 75 till 100 ish. And again, you can cut my numbers however you want and say, oh, I'm going to pass away at 92. Still 20 years times 100 grand or five, like the math's still a million dollars, $2 million, $3 million, no matter how you slice it up, it's still there. And so when you think about our society where most people just don't have that much money saved up, I'm going to be passionate sitting right next to Tarzan for the next few decades talking about you guys need to make more money and save more money. Your children will need it even more because they're going to live way longer than all of us. And we're going to technology where it's, hyper compounding how so how fast our technology is getting like they're going to be superhumans they're going to be so efficient they're going to have the most best medical things on the planet like we didn't have the best medical there wasn't hospitals everywhere like there is now there wasn't a different profession of medicine every single block like you can get anything you want from like the fanciest doctors in the world and learn from them and do telemedicine now we didn't have that 10 20 30 years ago so when you just think about the sheer math of the fact that you and your children can live longer life's going to go up theoretically seven to nine percent a year hopefully it goes down to anything two three four five percent inflation but for now i don't see it stopping when you just think about again 
this is not conspiracy theory. When we were kids, how much was gas? It was one to two dollars a gallon. Now it's three, four, five, six dollars a gallon. So just take out a calculator and look at. Okay, that's right, nine percent a year. It just adds up. If it started at dollar, then it went to two dollars after ten years, three dollars. Now we're at four, five, six dollars. It's just math. So none of the stuff I'm like making up or theorizing. It's just how much was gas before? How much is it now? How much was bread before? How much was milk? Like how much are the things that you buy on a normal basis and how much they are now, especially those damn six dollar muffins. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about them. So you guys have to think about this and why we want you listening to the Money Mondays, why we want you sharing it with your friends, family, followers, why we care about this podcast so much. Uh, by the way, have you noticed there's no ads? We're not doing this for, to make a bunch of money. We're spending a ton of money on this thing because it's an important message for all of you guys out there that we want you to spread it out there. So I want to wrap up with one. Tarzan, any last words about what I just said? Spend your time trying to learn how to make money for 30 years or more after you retire. Please. That is it. You hit the nail on the head, man. You need 100 grand a year for 30 years. $3 million. And to do that, you're not going to get that from your salary. You're not going to get that from your job. You need the salary and the job to be able to take some portion of that to invest. So one more quick thing. After you listen to this episode, go to Google and search compound calculator. Compound calculator. If you put in your age, let's say you're listening and you are 35 years old, and you put in that you're going to invest six grand a year, okay? And then every year you're going to try to increase it to 500 bucks more, 1,000 bucks more over the course of time. So let's say you're going to average around 10 grand a year over the course of your retirement age. Let's say it's 40 years. So you're 35, you're going to retire at 75, and you're going to contribute 10 grand a year. Seems doable, right? You're making 40, 50, 60, 70 grand a year. You're like, I'm going to contribute 10 grand a year, and I'm going to put in, I'm going to make 8% a year from my investment. That's going to be your average. Let's say some of it's 4%, like a, you know, like a fund, and you're going to make 11 or 12% on something that you found out there, like the S&P 500. By the way, the S&P 500 over the last 92 years has averaged an 11% a year return, even with all the ups and downs. So let's say you invest in the S&P 500, and you're going to average out only 8% a year, which is still a great number. So you're putting in 10 grand a year, you're going to make 8% a year, and you're going to do it for 40 years. So when you are 75, how much do you think is going to be waiting for you at the end of the rainbow? Whatever number you think it's more. Because most people are like, oh, if I put 10 grand a year for 40 years, I'm going to have like four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000. Eh. You're going to have between two and four million dollars waiting for you. You know what the number between two and four million is? Exactly what you need to survive for 30 years after you retire. So go get a compound calculator, start making more money, have these discussions with your friends, family, and followers, share the Money Mondays, and we'll see you guys next Monday.